You're listening to Kate Palmer from sparkletart.com. And today my video is going to be broken into three parts because there's a fair bit to it and I'm a little worried it might get a bit long. In the first clip, I showed you how to make this amazingly textural, grungy, vintage background. And now I'm going to be building on that by showing you some amazingly gorgeous, grungy, vintage, or even steampunky kind of texture. Now what you'll need for this is uh, some Liquitex light modeling paste, a stencil, and some magicals from Lindy's Stamp Gang. Now these little pots of powdered paint are amazing. It's a, a watercolor dye powder. If you buy the flats, they don't have any sparkle. If you buy the starburst version, there's some shimmer to them. So they're really versatile. You can do so many things with them. Now the first thing I'm going to do is just using a tiny little bit of the modeling paste. I'm going to add, as you can see, the most minute amount of powder to the paste. I'm adding blazing black to one and steampunk sepia to the other mostly because these colors will go really nicely with the background I've already created. Now, whilst designed to be activated with water, you can add these to a variety of mediums and get some truly awesome colors and custom pastes. So I'm mixing it really well with the modeling paste because it takes a little bit of time to activate the dyes and some of the dye colors you'll notice activate more quickly than others, depending on what paste or liquid you're using. So if you're using water, this is relatively quick. If you're using modeling paste like I am right here, it can take a little bit longer for all of those little dye crystals to dissolve. So keep mixing until you have one beautiful smooth color. Now I'm gonna start with my palest color, which is steampunk sepia. And I'm just gonna scrape this through the stencil onto my background. Now because my background is not flat, it's all crumpled and textural. This is not going to be a perfect result, but with all things vintage or grunge or steampunk, it's not supposed to look perfect anyway, otherwise it kind of ruins the effect. Everything with age is a little bit broken, a little bit damaged, a little bit dinged up. So that's what this is supposed to look like. Now after covering some random areas of my background tag with the steampunk sepia mixture, I'm going to add some of the black over the top. And this is not going to be perfect. It's going to make my background look aged and vintage. So instead of having one perfect color, I'll have two somewhat mixed textural elements. Now, the wonderful thing about using two of these colors together is that in some areas, you'll have only the sepia. In some areas, there will only be black. And in other areas, the two sort of mix as you go, creating a third color. And it's just a little bit more interest. Now I've added some of the black and scraped it around the edge just for something a bit extra. And now I'm going to add a little bit of embossing powder. And I have Midnight Bronze and Obviously Black. Now the Midnight Bronze has a shimmer and the Obviously Black is just this beautiful glossy goodness. I'm not going to add a lot and I'm adding it while that bottom layer is still wet and that acts as the glue that kind of sticks the embossing powder to the design. Now, as you can see, I'm only adding it in tiny little areas, and I would recommend not trying to reuse this again afterwards, both because it may have that modeling paste mixture on it, and it might have a little moisture. So I've added the Midnight Bronze first, and now I'm adding the Obviously Black. Now, I don't wanna to add too much and cover the entire design, I'm just looking to add a little bit more texture, a bit more difference into that textural paste, just so it doesn't look perfect, so it looks aged and vintage. Now, of course, I'm doing it in grungy colors. You could do this with brights, with pastels, with metallics. It works with everything. It just looks amazing. Now, here's where the little secret comes in. So not only does the heat gun dry the embossing powder, but it also makes that Liquitex modeling paste puff up a little and you get even more texture. Now, depending on the brand you've used, it may puff more or it may puff less. They all puff up a little, but some of them are almost like puff paint. If that's not the effect you're after, while it's still warm, but whilst the embossing powder has melted, flip it over onto a nonstick mat and just squash it a little and it 
it pushes the air out of that puffy, puffy texture paste and it's just flat again. Now I hope you can see it here, but you've got that beautiful shine from the embossing powder and you can see that puffiness just that I was talking about just there. You can see those little elements have puffed up along the edges. It's so cute and I really love doing this. Just to give something a little bit different to your project. Now it's a bit difficult to see the embossing powder here, so I've taken a few photos so you can get a closer look. But it's a really pretty effect between the matteness of that modelling paste that was coloured with the magicals and the beautiful shine from those embossing powders. See how gorgeous that looks against that shiny background? And the embossing powder just really helps break it up and look a bit grungier. Now here's a little peek at my finished tag. On the tag, I use all three techniques that I show you in this series of little clips. So I'll show you how to make the vintage or grunge or steampunk, whatever you'd like to use it for, background, and that adorable metal clip that I've made look like grungy vintage metal. So if you'd like to see the other videos, they're in the links section in the bottom of this clip. Just click and I hope you enjoy. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.